The series continues as we begin day two of our hunt, high in the mountains of the Eastern Cape. Below us we can see the Great Fish River winding through the valley and we really couldn't wish for a better view to start the day. In the previous episode we went after fallow deer and both Johan and Nico managed to take some fantastic shots at distances out to 750 yards. It was an awesome day of hunting but today we've changed things up a bit as I take my rifle out and Nico takes the camera. I'm hoping to get a shot at a mountain reed buck today but the few opportunities we do get just don't work out unfortunately as the animals are quite spooky and just don't present me with a shot. The area we're hunting this morning is quite grassy and open, quite different to the kloof we were hunting in yesterday and also home to a completely different variety of species. As we move through the grasslands we spot a herd of black wildebeest running in the distance and we decide to make a move on them as I'd never shot a black wildebeest before and I was really keen to take the opportunity. What makes these animals so difficult to hunt is that they are so full of energy and always on the move and because of the open terrain that they prefer to stay in you almost always end up having to take a fairly long shot. We head up and around the back of the hill are set up on a flat rock overlooking the herd and suddenly it starts to get very real. The herd has stopped about 420 meters away and they are quite calm so I have plenty of time to input all the conditions to my ballistic software, dial up the scope and get comfortable behind the rifle. Our biggest struggle at this point is trying to pick one to shoot. With the sun starting to beat down, the mirage was becoming quite bad and even through the excellent glass on my Night Force ATAC R, it was very difficult to distinguish the bulls from the cows. Eventually though we settle on an animal and when it turns broadside, I let the bullet fly. Okay, he's down. Well done, Matt. Good shot, Matt. He's down. Let's just give him a little while just to bleed out properly. Let's mark the spot. He's done. Yeah, he's down. 420 shot. meters, Matt. Yeah. Good shot, Matt. Ah, oh, here comes the rest of the herd that we didn't see. <laughs> there you go, man. Well done. I'm so happy with that. It's not an easy animal to kill. <laughs> They say the more lead you put into a wildebeest, the more alive it becomes. Hopefully they get. And yeah. with a, a not so big caliber like the 260 Remington, um, at a distance of 420 meters, you really have to get shot placement right. Thankfully though, the herd was nice and chilled, so um, we were able to actually take our time and um, you know get all the conditions and make sure we got the wind right, even though there's not that much wind, and um, yeah, get comfortable. Um, I've said it before, I feel more comfortable taking a shot at 500 meters if I've got time to set up than taking a shot at 50 meters uh, offhand or, or rushed. So I was very comfortable on that and, and I could not have played out better. Um, heart and lung shot by the looks of things and he ran a bit and then kind of keeled over and fell over. So that's exactly what you'd expect from a good vital shot and I'm really happy. So let's go check him out. Perfect, well done. Right, well here's our wildebeest. Uh, it's not a big animal, but um, the, the biggest animal in the, in the troop was the main peanut off to the left that we decided not to shoot because we, we thought that that was the only herd on the farm and that we wanted to keep the, the genes strong so you don't want to shoot the biggest animal of the herd. Um, but I'm just really, really happy with the way that that played out. Um, 440 meters, no, sorry, 420 meters. Um, and you can, as you can see here, the shot placement was pretty much perfect. So I'm really happy with that. It's, it's always kind of nerve wracking taking a shot at kind of further further distances with a small caliber like this um, you're never sure how it's going to perform but uh, I'm very happy with the way it played out Re really really happy so uh, that's probably what I'm going to call it today well it's been a fantastic morning so far and with the black wildebeest down we decide to head back to the farmhouse for a late breakfast the wildebeest goes into the cold room to preserve the meat and when the other bucky arrives we see that Hein 
had managed to shoot a nice fallow deer with his 6mm dasher. Unfortunately not on camera, but we are all happy to see him get something down. Nico is our master chef this morning and on the menu is the usual bacon and eggs. It's just a quick pit stop to get ourselves refueled, but it's not long before we out in the felt again. We start to see plenty of fallow deer and this gets me quite excited because it's one of the species on my list and something that I've never had the opportunity to shoot before. There are a few opportunities that pass us by with animals just moving over the horizon but eventually we spot a shadow under a bush at 400 yards and I set up for the shot. Okay, he's done. Well done. Here you go, 365 meters. It's my second animal of the day. For some reason on this shot, I've suddenly got buck fever. <laughs> really? Previous shot, I didn't have that, but I don't know why that's the case, but very happy. I took the shot, I could see him jump, heard the sound coming back, heard the thump and then just saw him come out of the bush looking a bit queasy and fell over. So he's down and I'm happy with that. My first fellow deer. So let's go check it out. Super stoked. Okay. Right, well that's the, the second uh, first of a species for me today. Shot that black wildebeest earlier and now I've just got an opportunity to shoot a, a fellow deer stag which is amazing. Um, what I, what's been great about this is that this isn't something that you find um, all over Africa. This was introduced actually to South Africa a long time ago and they've just happened to flourish in this mountainous part of the Eastern Cape. So there are a lot of them in this particular area but not really in the rest of the country. So to be able to come here and to hunt these in the part of the country where they flourish um, and to get that experience is absolutely amazing and the fact that they are so different to the antelope species we get here is something something great you know I'm, I'm not necessarily a, a big trophy hunter for me it's not all about um, horn size or antler size or anything like that I'm more of a, a hunter that appreciates the um, variety and being able to experience the different kinds of hunts that you go when you uh, hunt different species and you know the different terrains you hunt them in and everything so to come and get this was just fantastic and I firstly want to thank Nico who's on camera at the moment but he invited me out here to do this hunt I've used some of the the products that he sells like the bolt knob on my on my ticker that's performed really well um, we met at Huntex last year built a friendship we both have an interest in long-range shooting and he invited me out here to shoot these so that's been amazing and then um, just to mention my equipment that I'm using I've got the Savage Model 12 260 Remington I've got uh, a GRS stock on it and I've got a Night Force ATAC R scope and all of this uh, has really set me up well for taking these longer shots so it really is not a challenge at 360 meters to take a shot like that and that's why when we saw this animal I jumped on the opportunity quickly and, and made it happen so yeah I'm happy with the shot placement looks good I'm on the shoulder it was maybe quartering towards me a little bit so maybe the would have traveled a little bit far back but definitely would have clipped some lungs and he went down very quickly so happy with that and um, we're gonna see what the next few days hold We were just about ready to call it a day and head back to the house but on our way home we spot a herd of mountain reedbuck and Hein decides to set up for a shot. They unfortunately move out of range and we lose them but as we're about to move on a group of fallow deer moves out into the open about 500 yards away and we switch targets.
we head down to retrieve the animal and I'm not going to show you the aftermath because it's a little bit too gory for YouTube but it was a great end to the day's hunting and with the light starting to fade we head back to the house. On the menu tonight is poiki and for those of you who don't know what poiki is it's basically a traditional South African way of cooking stew in a big pot over the fire. Nico's provided some meat from a previous hunt, we add some potatoes and vegetables and we enjoy some hunting stories as we wait for it to cook. Once again we are able to head to bed with a full stomach ready for another hunting adventure the next day.